It was a pivotal day for public works teams to tackle the winter road conditions. They had one day with temperatures in the 20s before it dips back down. We have the risk of refreeze overnight and more snow coming soon. Before we get to Ann Campolongo, KCCI's Bo Bowman has a look at how the Department of Transportation is preparing. Bo? Well, Ben, Stacy, yes, today was a huge day for those DOT crews out working on the roads because of how much it warmed up. But as you can see on this map, it is about to cool down here soon. Winter Operations Administrator Craig Bargfried says today crews are still trying to help some Iowans in the southeastern corner of the state dig out from that snow. Bargfried says those roads have been basically impassable since Friday and they are still working to clear them and widen the lanes. He says right now their snow storage, which is the ditches and the rural, rural roads, is just about full and any more snow and wind could cause some serious problems. And now with more frigid temper temperatures on the horizon, they're trying to treat the roads right now before it becomes too cold to do so. Our materials are very ineffective from a salt, salt brine standpoint when you get down into those single digits and obviously below zero. Uh, very difficult for us to use anything other than a sand salt type of mixture to get out there on the on the road to provide uh, you know something for friction out there. Now I did ask Bartfried what kind of cost is put on the state when a storm like this hits. He says they're still playing catch up with all that paperwork. Most of them have been out on the roads over the past couple of days, so they won't have those numbers until either the end of this week or the beginning of next week. Stacy. Bo, thank you. The University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics says it treated more than 40 different cases of frostbite during that cold stretch. Nurses with UIHC say that's more than they've seen in the past over the course of just one weekend. They say many of these cases were caused by people who didn't have enough winter clothing on. Nurses in the burn treatment center at the hospital say age can be a risk factor when it comes to frostbite as well. So the very young and the very old are at high risk because our skin is thinner, our vasculature is not as healthy. Um, two, with um, people that may have dementia or something, they may go outside and wander out. Same with kids. If you think you may have frostbite, UIHC says to soak the area in warm, not hot, but warm water. Aim for about 100 to 110 degrees, then keep that area elevated. It is a little warmer today, but still kind of dangerously cold outside. Yeah, it's still chilly and but it was a nice to get a break yeah. from those really, really frigid temperatures. Uh, yeah, and then it's just coming back just in time for the weekend, guys. We've got another blast of that colder air uh, coming our way as we head into Thursday and Friday morning. Temperatures tonight will still be cold. We've got clouds outside right now rolling uh, rolling in ahead of our next storm system. Temperatures in the low 20s. We've got very light winds out there making it feel a little bit better to be outside and we've We've also seen just a thin uh, stretch here of a little bit of late snow. A lot of this not even making it to the ground, but there is a potential for a few uh, light snow showers, mainly across north central uh, and western portions of the state here overnight tonight. So we could see a skiff of snow later on this evening, but we've got a better chance of snow here for everyone as we head into uh, the day on Thursday. Winds again, calm and quiet right now. Temperature wise, we're sitting in the teens across northern Iowa, low 20s across central portions of the state. Wind chill, though, making it feel just a touch colder than that in some spots.